Cloud. Okay. This is helping the recording and helping find and locate everything. Okay, fibromyalgia part two. Where did we leave off last week? We did nerve ions. Victoria? We did antispasmatics. We did antispasmatics. We do nerve, we did sedatives, we did right? Sedatives. And we finished off sedatives with California coffee. Okay. Okay, that's all we did though, just those two categories. Yeah. No nerve ions. Okay, so here again, we're going, we're taking our natural medicine approach. Remember, basic idea of fibromyalgia and real natural medicine is about every single person is unique. We're looking for the patterns of how people experience this, whatever we're going to call this disease or process. So we, once we understand the pattern, we know how to help them because, right, one person may have joint pain, one may not, one may have fatigue, one may not. So there's just all these variations. This is how we really create a more holistic approach, just, just to review. So this is a constitutional approach. So we kind of talked about possibly why people get fibro. So now we're going to go to nerve iron. Obviously, this is going to be for people whose fibromyalgia is maybe caused by stress, triggered by stress, aggravated by stress. And trust me, if this is your type of fibro, you know. Stress is it. Nerves are a big trigger for things getting worse or better. Um. There's a lot of nervine herbs that we could fit here, but again, we're trying to just focus on the most important view. Um, wood bedney is going to be one of the preeminent nervines. Remember, wood bedney is a, one of our classic nervines for any kind of chronic stress, anxiety, stress symptoms. Very gentle, can be used for all ages, all sensitivities, no known drug interactions with it. Easy to grow in your yard. Um, so wood bedding is gonna be for people that have a lot of anxiety or stress symptoms with their fibro, or they're trying to manage their chronic stress and anxiety that is triggering them to get worse during times. And often with fibro, what we're also going to see when people need nerve binds is they're going to have a lot of tension in the muscle tissue. So when we palpate their neck or their muscles, they're going to feel really rigid and tight. And they're also going to probably have some nerve type pain. So usually people that need nerve binds that have fibro have a confusing sometimes what sometimes might feel like is that I've had a lot of patients that looks and feels exactly like neuropathy, but is actually diagnosed as fibromyalgia. So if you have numbness in the hands or feet, tingling in the hands or feet, a lot of times patients will say muscle groups can even feel numb or tingly. And there can be a lot of like nerve actual pain in the muscle tissue. Like these sharp stabbing pains, these pinching pains that are often common with like nerve type inflammation. Um, these are also gonna be really good for people that do have a history of like spinal nerve problems. Like you have stenosis of the spine, or spinal nerves are inflamed and that's firing off a lot of other fibromyalgia like in the neck or lower back or mid back. Okay. So wood bedney is said is one of the most anti-inflammatory to muscles directly. It's very unique. I don't know of any nervine, <clears throat> maybe skull cap somewhat and kava somewhat that are directly anti-inflammatory to the muscle and the nerves and muscle tissue. 
You also know wood bentony is very good for what other medical problem that often comes with fibro? Headaches and migraine. Yeah. And when people say I have a severely stiff neck and that's part of their fibro, this herb just jumps out. It's extremely helpful. Okay. Second herb is our friend kava. Kava root. So kava is going to be of all the nerve vines. Kava is going to be one of the most muscle relaxing for actual pain and tension in the muscle. Remember, we talked about it. It is an actual muscle antispasmodic. But again, one difference being that kava has a very warm energy being in the pepper family. Some people may need that. Some people may not. The kava also has a much more dramatic effect on just stress. So in people who stress are very compounded, where they have like a really cold constitution. Typically with fibromyalgia, we know people have a cold constitution when they say things like, I hate cold weather. When it's cold, my fibromyalgia symptoms are worse. That's pretty basic. All right. Kava is really, really, really well suited for that. Is it okay as a tincture or is it preferable as a tea? It works. Kava works great as a tea, probably the best. As the powder tea, where we're brewing it traditionally, like we did in class, where you're just making mud water kind of with cloth and just squeezing it out. That's probably the best way. The capsules, if you get a good company, you know, like Gaia or Forum, like we talked about, very good. Tincture is good. There's just, um, it's such a strong herb, but the tincture, a lot of the things are, the intensity is kind of so. But I actually think probably the, the kava, the tea is the best, the capsules and tincture probably second. And for this, remember kava too, this right works really well. And you could also, if you want to get into like medicine making, you can make a kava, make the tea from the powder, and then add this right to preserve it, to make a like preserve this right. So there's different ways you could do that. Right? There's all kinds of medicine making things you could do. So this is going to be when people have more extreme anxiety. What's the problem with using kava with patients with fibromyalgia? What are we looking out for? Precautions. We don't give it to people that have like liver disease. Um, for reasons we said that aren't necessarily true, but it's just a precaution that we take. Um, we also cannot combine this with anti-anxiety drug because it will potentially interact because it is strong enough to do that. Okay. But not depression. Depression meds are usually okay. But, uh, <laughs> So then the third nervine is going to be a skull cap. So again, skull cap is often called the most pure and classical nervine in the whole materia medica. But we know it specifically good for, again, nerve pain, <clears throat> muscle pain, muscle tension, muscle stiffness, all types of stress and anxiety. The awesome thing about Skullcap is it does not interact with anti-anxiety medications. It's not that strong. It can be used on all ages. Um, and it's also good when there's been damage to a nerve. And we said it's especially great when people have things like restless leg syndrome, muscle spasms, muscle twitches, people who have tremors and shakes. When people have, when they stick out their tongue and it's shaking, when they have fibromyalgia, we think of skullcap instantly too. 
these are probably the best three classical. I try to divide each herb into its category that it best fits to make it easy to talk about. So there's a lot of other nervines. All the sedatives we discussed would be nervines too, but these are like the three classic nervines. Questions on that? How long does would it take? If, um, my sister in law said really bad by both. Mm -hmm. She's got one. So, um, how long have you been on it for all the drugs? And yeah, I mean, I think. How long have, if she was on, let's say, wood bed me and um, still kept? How long yeah. would it take? Um, I mean, I think, you know, fibro, like, Three months, this is a pretty drastic change. It was common. <laughs> not like the years that you would think for most people. You know, some people could have so many other layers of disease that it just makes it more complicated. Or some people could have just so much stress in their life or may not have any like spousal support or family. So, you know, those things are going <laughs> to slow the process of <laughs> So remember, in natural medicine, we're always thinking about treating the root and the branch. This is why we always ask people, okay, you have fibromyalgia, tell me your story. In that story, we're trying to detect what in the heck triggered this thing? What is it? What's the original trigger? Was it like divorce, stress, a bad boss? Was it work? Was it family? Was it... You know, school stress was, uh, you know, what did it? Did you have a viral infection? So it's very important to remember in patients who it appears like chronic stress is the cause of their fibromyalgia, the knee nerves are essential for getting people out of it. Remember, we're always trying to treat the root. So the root cause is that stress originally triggered your fibro, then we have to have nervines to kind of restore the whole process to peel through the layers of the onion, so to speak. And these patients, yoga, tai chi, stress reduction, are probably going to create a bigger effect for other patients. They may not seem like they have a huge effect, that other stress relieving thing, or often in patients that have this, you know, anxiety drug medications will often have not a benefit on the pain, but they just feel better overall. Yeah. Could a medically induced coma cause it? Sure. Yeah. All of any kind of stress like that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And remember, all these herbs for fibro can be used topically with great help. Remember, if we want to really help people with fibro heal quicker, the more we can get some topical support, whether it's massage, or whether it's oils or essential oil blends, or these herbs work great as baths or liniments, it's going to be extremely helpful for them. Okay. Is it that easy to confuse limes with fibro? And limes can just be so hard to diagnose and be so tricky. And fibromyalgia can be too, just based on the doctor you have. And a lot of people that have limes basically have every fibromyalgia symptom. It just depends on the how people are experiencing their lives. So it can be kind of a gray area. A lot of people often have both. A lot of people that have fibro, just because they suffer so much, you know, feel they have lines, whether they do or not, sometimes we never know. I mean, you know, they still get better, but sometimes we never you know for certain. They're both notoriously hard to diagnose. Okay, so everybody's okay with this? When your original cause, and remember, just because somebody tells us this very clearly, 
it's shocking to me how many people have never like put that together because most people don't think about we're not taught to think about what's the origin of my disease what's the original trigger right we have to go back in time and treat the original trigger to unravel everything most people have never thought of this so they're just like yeah um and when did your fiber round just start like eight years ago you know whatever okay well, what's going on well that was my divorce you know like okay so probably stress and like well i don't know i never thought of it but yeah probably so I mean, we have to ask these questions of people because they often don't we're not trained we're not taught to think of think this way so okay it, it reminds me of this Lyme's patient that I had that was so severe, one of the most severe cases I ever saw. I actually thought he got worse and quit seeing me a while ago. And then he referred a neighbor to me and he's totally fine still, like zero symptoms. But I thought he just went off and left. But he actually had this weird job in Alaska where he had to like clean out like chemical he had a weird profession. Basically, like clean out like toxic solvents out of like big tanks, like suits and everything. Like, got yeah, Lyme symptoms after that. It's like, so you know, you're probably pretty weak, and your body and liver and limb would probably extremely, you know, weakened state, and then you get bit by the kick. So it's you know, we have to think of like the fiber of limes. You know, it's an opportunistic experience sometimes. I mean, if you're really stressed, when you do get bit by a tick or something, it could be a huge process for someone who's super healthy and not very stressed. They may have had limes and never even know it. And other people can get, can just change their life forever. Or fibro could be the same way, right? We have the same stress as maybe somebody that developed fibro, but we never developed it. So we have to think about that, right? Okay. Yeah. Question. The, are RA symptoms often confused with fibro symptoms? RA or... symptoms are usually not, um, not confused with fibro because fibro usually. People usually don't have a lot of joint pain usually, so it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Okay, next action category, one of the most essential. We couldn't help people with fibromyalgia without this. Now we're starting to get more into like holistic things. This is where people that do maybe like pop natural medicine or more medical minded, like this is where they're not, you know, if you read a lot of textbooks with people that are supposed to be, you know, super clinical and they're talking about fibro, they're just, you know, going down this route of like, you know, muscle inflammation and inflammation. And, but now we're getting more holistic. So adaptogens. What is your fibro trigger or experience? What are your symptoms going to look like if you need adaptogens? You're going to have, you're coming in for fibro, right? But when, like I said, that's why we talk to people, right? You can't do a holistic assessment in five minutes. It's impossible, right? Because we have to ask these people, okay, you have fibro, get it? What does that look like? And what they're going to tell us sometimes, they're only all they have is fatigue. They don't even might not have zero muscle symptoms whatsoever, other than the fact when you touch certain muscle points, they're sore. That helps the diagnosis, but they're really just saying I'm fatigued, wiped out, fatigued, I'm overwhelmed. My, it's obvious when we hear their story that their fibro was triggered by like extreme fatigue and exhaustion. And often, whether we call it adrenal fatigue or fatigue, that was the cause. That's what they're still experiencing. Their quality of life, this is where you have to like ask patients like, okay, you have fibromyalgia. Okay. What, what 
experience that you're having most makes your life not good, right? Most affects your life. And often they'll say, well, okay, because they wanted to talk about like this inflammation and they have this vocabulary. We have to bring them back to like what exists in your reality. And often when people say, well, I'm really just fatigued and wiped out. So this should not surprise us because we know when people are fatigued and wiped out, their immune function drops, which can trigger fibromyalgia and make it worse, right? And people that have a full recovery from fibromyalgia, this can often re-trigger it when you start to get too exhausted and fatigued and run down and sleep deprived, right? Okay. So here we're talking about adaptogens, but there are a couple of adaptogens that are really specifically helpful for fibro experience. Which ones do you think those are? Um, what's the yeah? That's one of them. What's the number one or that we talked about a lot? That is an adaptogen that's super anti-inflammatory. Yeah, the main adaptogen is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. We cannot use this if somebody's on thyroid medication. Otherwise, we do it right. So ashwagandha is unique because it's an adaptogen for fatigue and chronic fatigue and exhaustion, but it is also an immune tonic for a weak immune system and immune suppression, and it's also good for autoimmune condition. A lot of people still feel fibromyalgia is just an autoimmune condition that people are not agreeing that that's what it is, but there's a lot of people that really believe that. I kind of believe that myself. I think it's more of an autoimmune like condition. Um, ashwagandha, we said, is really specific for inflammation in the muscle tissue itself. Sore muscles, achy muscles, weak muscles, aches and pains. It's unique, but it's also this amazing immune tie. And we said the cool thing about it is ashwagandha never overstimulates like ginseng might, and it never affects blood pressure. So we're, we're going to make maybe like a prototype supremo fibro formula we're going to work on here. I'll give you this. This will be called like a base formula, right? Maybe we'll pick up one more along the way. One of the most amazing base formulas for fibro is ashwagandha for the fatigue and adrenals and immune function. Would that mean for the muscle pain and nerve aspect? Skullcap for the muscle pain and nerve aspect and black hog for the muscle inflammation and tension. That's what I call like not the holy trinity of those four, but quadra. Quadra. Did you stop out quad magic? <laughs> What's that? Did you stop out something for the ashwagandha? Yeah, so this would be like just like a prototype formula to work with the start, just as like a good for somebody who's on thyroid and yeah. exactly. I would say in almost every fibromyalgia patient I've seen, probably almost always had almost all of these four all the time. What was the black hole? Muscle tension, yeah. just the muscle spasmodic, and the muscle inflammation. So, Nicholas, instead of ashwagandha, what would you use? Yeah, so let's go next. We do more adaptogens. This is why we talk about a category two, right? So, the other adaptogen that was mentioned, which is one of the favorites, is Chinese ginseng. We have Chinese ginseng root, right? Different than American ginseng. Why is this herb in particular really helpful for fibromyalgia? Because like 
ashwagandha it is one of the amazing immune modulators immune balancing herbs so we use it a lot for autoimmune conditions we use it a lot for weak immunity what's also unique about chinese ginseng or asian ginseng is that this sucker's a little bit more extreme for energy so you know if you're talking to someone and you can tell you know i say okay what's your energy level one to ten they're like you know one two you're probably thinking okay we have to bring out something really heavy or maybe we have a patient is like you can tell is really impatient this is like this is your one shot for fibro to at least get them excited um, or maybe you've seen a patient and you gave them something like ashwagandha but it just wasn't energizing enough, but they were getting improvements like in their pain, stiffness and tension, but they weren't really seeing the energy part. Then maybe we would switch to something stronger. Remember in Chinese medicine, what's our basic slogan? It's the basic motto of Chinese medicine. Preserve the chi, the righteous chi. Above all else, protect the righteous chi. Here we have a chi tai. Right? No healing is happening without chi or energy or vitality, period. So here we're just saying, well, that's pretty simple. You're fatigued. We're just going to replenish your energy. And that's what it does. Now, we know that in some people, this could elevate their blood pressure. In people that have like heart palpitations and fluttering, we usually don't do Chinese ginseng because it can make that pro. People that have AFib, we don't do Chinese ginseng because it's too stimulating. Not caffeine stimulating, but just too stimulating. And we cannot do Chinese ginseng with blood pressure medications or blood thinners. Okay. And remember, we said Chinese ginseng was like, okay, people are going through the progression of adaptogens. You have like ashwagandha, which is more mild. And then we go up to the next one, which is eleuthero ginseng, right? This is kind of like step one, step two. And then Chinese ginseng is like, okay, that didn't energize you. Now we're we're going for it. So the eleuthero is an adaptogen that's kind of at that mid-level. It's strong enough, more energizing than ashwagandha, but it, it does not affect blood pressure. There's no known drug interaction. It's just a very wonderful true, Like skullcap is like the classic nervine. Ubithro is almost like the classic adaptogen. It just perfectly fits the profile. And we know these herbs are all immune enhancing. So for weak immunity, for people that have fibro, they're always sick. Maybe they have other autoimmune problems. Um, oh, the other thing I was getting to when we have someone that maybe has, you know, because it's it's known that Epstein Barr virus can trigger. Um, fibromyalgia or other viruses. So if you have like a history of mana or Epstein-Barr, then Eleuthero can be a really good adaptogen. Remember, it's kind of middle of the road. Okay. Um, another one that fits this category that's a little more stimulating and even a, sometimes a little more challenging to use would be licorice root. A great adaptive, a great immune herb, an amazing anti-inflammatory. It has, you know, almost steroid-like effects on inflammation. What's the problem with using licorice root, though? Could uh, increase blood pressure. Yeah, it could increase blood pressure. Again, we do not give it to people with high blood pressure. We don't give it to people that have a lot of water tension. We don't give it to people that um, have a lot of heart palpitations too. 
but it is one of the more powerful adaptogens. And it's just so anti-inflammatory and so antiviral. Remember how when we talked about COVID and SARS and we talked about all the viral infections we can have, how licorice is one of the most antiviral plants in research. Yeah. If you have a micro uh, prolapse, uh -huh. can you use the Chinese ginseng? You can use mitral valves a little different, not as sensitive to some of these things. So with mitral valve, it's not as big of an issue as like a So licorice is not as strong as the other three, but it doesn't interact with anything. So it might be a good starting point for well, I mean, it does interact with like oh, blood okay. pressure medications and not that one. The oh, yeah, Luthro is just this really great when you want something that's really energizing, but there's no other concerns about it. That's my personal way of using it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, that's exciting. There's other ones we could do too, right? But I'm gonna, they're gonna come in at the next category. Okay. So adaptogens. Your fibromyalgia is triggered by fatigue, exhaustion, overexertion, over everything. Your main symptom is fatigue or suffering from your fatigue symptom. Here's another key symptom we have. Remember how we talked about aggravations? We say, okay. What makes your fibromyalgia worse? And they say, when I exert myself, when I work too much, when I don't get enough sleep, when we're doing those things that drain our energy and your fibro gets worse, then that just tells us what's going on, right? Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to get to one more category real quick. Okay. So with fibro two, we talked about this a little bit, like Lyme's disease or other viruses or other chronic inflammation, we may rotate formulas around every six to eight weeks until we find like that formula or that combination that people are making dramatic progress on. We'll usually kind of move around a little bit. Okay. Okay, so let's do immune modulators. That's the next category. Modulators. So here we're gonna have people that have a lot of other autoimmune conditions, like maybe rheumatoid arthritis, or Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, um, lupus, and all kinds of other autoimmune problems, right? or family history of it. People are gonna have a very weak immune system, always getting an infection, always run down. We have a history of chronic infections. Often when we interview people that need immune modulators, they will say, yeah, I've just been sick every year since I've been born. I just always get sick. I catch everything that goes around. Like, that's just me. That makes us think about immune modulators. People that have a lot of chronic allergies, that's like a weak immune system symptom, right? Okay. Okay. What are some of our best? Immune modulator. Probably our number one for fibro. What do you think? There's a few, but astragalus roots going to be one of the number one. The ultimate ketonic, it is an adaptogen itself, but it's more of like an immune adaptogen. Very good when people have an extremely weak and depleted immune system, always getting allergies. And remember environmental sensitivities like the chemicals 
and smells and fragrances is also an immune weakness, right? So when people have like a lot of chemical sensitivities, food allergies, remember astragalus also heals the gut. So it's like one of our main food allergy herbs and food sensitivity, just an amazing herb. I mean, one of the most researched herbs that we have, we understand a lot about its chemistry. But this is going to be one of the main base things we're going to do. Traditionally, like in Chinese medicine, this astragalus is almost always combined with either like licorice or Chinese ginseng to enhance the effects of each other. That's like a very classical combination. Licorice or Chinese ginseng are often combined with them. And remember, astragalus has all those antiviral effects and immune strengthening effects. You know, if we're going to help someone break the cycle, you know, of chronic infections and all these fibromyalgic symptoms that come with it, this is what we're going to use. Okay. Another one that's really high up there. Remember, ashwagandha, most of the adaptogens will be covered with fit here. But again, just for sake of covering the topic, we're trying to separate these into categories. The second biggest one is going to be a reishi a mushroom. Broad spectrum immune enhancing properties broad spectrum antiviral properties, little bit of an adaptogen, little energizing, but probably more calming than energizing, right? <laughs> Filled with all of these disease preventative compounds, anti-aging compounds, right? A super exciting mushroom. And what's nice about reishi is that it really, it just, it's, everybody tolerates it well. I've never had anybody tolerate it poorly. So, and we can often give really high doses of it to people. So a lot of times with fibromyalgia, we're doing these things like wood bent knee and skull cap and black hawk with the muscle pain and aches and stiffness. But we're usually going to combine that with like an adaptogen and some kind of immune modulator. That's usually like the base protocol. So if we want to have like a dream prototype formula, we might consider putting something like a reishi on the skin for a patient. That's a pretty broad spectrum. So cordyceps mushroom is also going to be really good here too. We talked about that before. Yeah. Questions on the Immune modulators. These are both really well tolerated, all ages too. So we can sometimes, if we think the immune system is the biggest factor for the fibromyalgia patient, we can give people like a lot of ratio mushroom or a lot of dragulus, you know, all by itself or in a formula. And it's very, very well tolerated. The best way for ratio. Reishi, um, my favorite way for the immune effects is going to be as a capsule or a tea. The tincture is better, I think, suited as a nerve calming agent. But I think the capsules or the tea are the best way to do reishi. But I mean, tinctures will work. I just think you know, the ones are better. The stragglers, you know, a capsule works really well. The tincture works amazing. He is great too. They're all, oh, anyway, you get a stragglers, it works well. Do you get more 
health benefits through the team? With Reishi, I think you get more benefits, better extraction of those things. And that statement capsules? The, yeah, so the fungi perfecta would be one brand that'd be really good. There's other brands too, but that'd be one of the best. Remember, we're, we're talking about, wow, that's a big point. So for the immune modulating effect, we're talking about reishi mushroom and or mycelium. Remember for cancer or for the immune effects, we can do either just the mushroom or the mushroom combined with the mycelium. Remember, if we want the nerve effects, we only do the mushroom, right? Okay. So let's leave it there. Yeah. It's a little bit strong. Are the things for kids? No, really? Yeah, very. Both these are great for pediatrics and everything. The community. I uh, use them a lot on kids that have this. Yeah, one kid is dad's a famous doctor in town. Um, and then it was chronic sinus infections that no one can really explain. And uh, we've given them like the my community of this ratio blend, and it's just completely like stopped. It was like every two months, you basically be bedridden for about a week at a time. And um, just totally stop that same thing. Mm -hmm. Unseen. So there's a lot of other categories. We're going to have that part three. So we have lymphatics, <laughs> bitters, hepatics, and other other topics. We'll just, you know, carminatives, antidepressants. We got quite a bit more to do. So we have one more fibroclast. So I don't know if you just got my email, but class Saturday is postponed till the following week because the people that are going to do the hydrosol cannot do Saturday now, which they said they could. Um, they can only do next week. I have distilled hydrosols and essential oils myself only about four times. Um, these are two past students that have one of the coolest off-grid homesteads you will see in the state of Nebraska. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it's an amazing place to be, and they have a lot more experience than me. So I feel like they're better trained to do this than me. So, um, so class is going to be next Saturday. It's their farm is right kind of outside of Branch Oak Lake. That's where we're going to have it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, the ones I get too short drive. Everybody be distilling essential oils. Um, I have to apologize to Sue, who set up this wonderful thing we were going to have Saturday um, that we had to change. So we're going to hopefully get to go back there for a retreat. Oh, Sunday. So, yeah. Of course. All right. We'll see. So next Saturday.